welcome in to getting help from Uncle Sam, and we sure need some help. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and we are we delighted. Need, we need to let our viewers know that we're just, you know, we're about three weeks away from the uh, primary right now, so that's the reason we've been putting a lot of candidates on so you get an idea of what their thoughts are. Yes. Well, and I think that, like we have said, we are very fortunate to have with us today Bobby Bright, and he's running for the con the con for Congress. Second Congressional District. And, Second Congressional And I think that what we are trying to do here is you hear a lot of, like, generalizations. And what we want you to do and have advocated, dig into the details. The devil truly is in the details. And so, uh, Mr. Bright, we are going to ask you a couple of questions okay. that are definitive. And okay. uh, let's, let's start with some of the things that really matter to you. I'd like for you to dig a little deeper into funding. Right. Well, be glad to, Virginia. Thank you all very much for having me on your show. I watch it every Sunday along with thousands of Good. other people out there. And, uh, Thank you. And you really uh, help us understand as we get older what the main issues are mm -hmm. that affect us daily. Uh, so thank you very much. The main issues that we need to be addressing in Congress is our national defense, number one. And, and number one, that is, that is the most important thing the federal government can do is protect us here in yes. our country and keep us safe. And uh, that's probably the number one issue the federal government sh uh, should always be involved in. Uh, number two is our economy and what affects us daily. How do we support our children? And so the Congress cannot create jobs, but what they can do is create an environment so that businesses can be successful. They can, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as they get more successful, they employ more people, and the more people they employ, uh, creates an atmosphere where they can support their children and our co our economy and our country is much better off as a result mm -hmm. of that but also that's uh, there's something that's very important right now too and that's our deficit uh, our economy uh, is affected by the deficit that we are creating every day and Congress just passed a new budget it's a uh, Mo Brooks. It's, 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 it's right. A, I'm, I'm going to mention a fellow colleague in, in the right. state government, Mo Brooks. He said this was a spending junkies dream, the budget that j mm -hmm. just passed. Our Congress should have never voted to pass that and send it over to the president and force him basically to sign it. Right. And that's what happened. It had things in there that uh, we should not have in there, and that's Planned Parenthood. It had, it increased the deficit by another trillion dollars. And it also funded uh, the Affordable Care Act, uh, things that our congressperson promised years ago that she would not support. Mm -hmm. But when you vote for a budget and it has all those items in there, you're still approving what they do right. in general. So you can say all day long that you're not uh, supporting abortions and that you're not sending money over to Planned Parenthood for them to uh, fund abortions, but if you fund uh, them and let them keep the doors open, they'll take our money, put it over here, and use some of their other money to fund abortions. So the best thing to do is to vote against it, and if any budget ever appears in front of me, I will vote no if it's got Planned Parenthood or if it uh, increases our deficit like this past budget did. And look, they took the budget, and they t it's a very it's so many pages into the budget. That's right. And it, in two hours, they wanted everybody to look at it and vote. That's exactly right. And that's and no way to ridiculous. do it. ridiculous. It's no way to do And I promise you, and I'm committed to the people of Alabama, if that ever happens to me, they've got a no vote from me, and they won't have any negotiating to do mm -hmm. with me at all. Another major issue that we need to be concerned with is our representation on two key committees in Alabama that we need. You know, for years, uh, Bill Dickerson, and uh, Terry Everett and myself served on the Armed Services and the Agriculture Committees. Those mm -hmm. are key committees. The number one employer in the state of Alabama is farming, is yes. agriculture. More than all the automotive. More than the automotives than any other industry mm -hmm. uh, that we can mention or even think about. So for us not to have a representation directly on that committee or on the Armed Services Committee to protect our military bases and our veterans is really tremendous uh, negligence on the part of our representative in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get on some of these, I call them the wine and dine committees in Washington, and one of them is appropriations. Right. Appropriations is a wine and dine committee. You have no direct input on, uh, on Alabama as far as uh, the military uh, is concerned and the farmers are concerned. 
uh, and you, but you get invited to all the parties and all the receptions up there if you want it. But I don't want that. I want to go up there and work and protect the people. So mm -hmm. I'll get back on those key. The Armed Services is the most powerful committee in Washington, D.C. I agree. Mm -hmm. And for us not to be on there with two military bases oh. and all the veterans right. is, is malfeasance as far as I'm concerned. And agriculture is something so necessary for our entire country. And District 2 is so strong in farming yes. that we are, once again, being derelict by not having our direct representative on that committee. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, Dickerson, Everett, and myself had been on those committees for over 50 years. Yes. And, they, and we had built up a lot of good will, had built up a good, strong uh, reputation in those areas, and now we have nobody on those committees whatsoever for District 2. Well, and right now, Republicans control both houses of the Congress, and, 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 and the we're president. getting nothing done. And the presidency. And we're going, to, yeah, we're going backwards. Uh, it's awfully polarizing in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that when I was there before. Uh, if I go back as a Republican, I'll be able to get on that, uh, get on, uh, get up there with a majority because I think they're going to continue to maintain the majority in the House. And I will do again what I did before, propose a balanced budget amendment. When I was there before, I was a conservative um, blue dog Democrat. Sure. We didn't, I only got uh, 40 of my colleagues. They were all Democrats. And because I was a Democrat, no Republican would get on that uh, bill with me. Mm -hmm. If I go back, I'll be able to recruit quite a few Republicans, and we'll make some headway with that balanced budget amendment that I proposed years ago. People can go to your site to learn That's more right. about you. It's bright for Congress, right? That's it. That's it. They can get a hold of me anyway. Uh, as long you just Google bright, and you'll you'll see my you get all kinds. You'll of see things. my face come up. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, and best of luck. And thank remember you. this: the election's not that far away. Do your homework. Reach out to the candidates, and more importantly, get out there and vote. And we'll be right back right after this.